increased technical and operational assistance at the external borders, taking into account that some situations may involve humanitarian emergencies and rescue at the sea. As part of the Hermes operation, all the assets present in Lampedusa were immediately sent to the place where the accident occurred. Frontex is co-financing two coast patrol vessel in Lampedusa, which took part in the search and rescue operation. Additionally, a Frontex co-financed fixed wing aircraft from the Italian Coast Guard was sent to the area to provide area support to the search and rescue operation. Following the dramatic accident near Lampedusa, Frontex sent out a call to see which other member states will be able to participate in a possible reinforcement. Work in, is in progress with the Frontex in order to prioritize its activities and release additional funds for sea operations in the Mediterranean. Now, a significant number of you mentioned the need for a comprehensive migration and asylum policy in the EU. Reacting to this, I would like to express hope that yesterday agreed task force led by the Commission will effectively address the most urgent migration policy issues that you have raised in a comprehensive way and come up with the proposals on the next steps to be taken by you member states and institutions. President, Madam Commissioner, Honorable Members, let me close by assuring you that the Presidency will, will, will uh, work very closely with the Commission to maintain a focus on this issue, especially bearing in mind uh, what uh, Honorable Carla was saying. This is what features very high on this Presidency's priority list. We will not cease in our determination to put in place all those tools and means to ensure that the tragic events of last week are never repeated. I thank you for your attention. Mr. Silvestri, is this a point of order? I'm sorry, you can't use a blue card to speak to the Commissioner or the Council. I'm sorry, those are the rules of procedure. That brings the debate to a close. The vote will be taken at the next session. Ora un annuncio ricevuto dal I now have an announcement. The S&D Group has requested Derek Vaughan's appointment as a member of the Budgetary Control Committee to re replace Francesca Baraccio. If there are no comments, that appointment will be confirmed. Ora, all'ordine del giorno. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Mulder's report on the European Border Surveillance System, also known as Eurosur. I shall give the rapporteur, Mr. Mulder, the floor for four minutes. Thank you, Mevrouw de Voorzitter. Thank you, Madam President. In the last debate, um, Eurosur was mentioned uh, several times. And that this is perhaps one of the big things we're going to be deciding on tomorrow um, as a follow-up to the last debate we had today. What's the purpose of Eurosur? It's to provide a, an EU uh, framework for the exchange of information and cooperation, which is more, much more effective than what we currently have. Why are we doing that? Well, first of all, to um, clamp down on illegal and irregular immigration where that's possible prevent cross-border crime being committed and then, and this is perhaps the most important contribution of the Parliament, we want more scope, better uh, ways of saving human lives, particularly in the Mediterranean. And this is one of the most important points, the last one, which the Parliament um, contributed and that's in Article 1 and Article 2 of the regulation and in various um, parts of the passages 
of the text, references made to the need to save human lives. These are the external frontiers. And we're looking in particular at our neighbouring countries. Uh, but we can also um, mean there airports in certain countries under the regulation, if member states so desire, um, they can deem, uh, they can uh, take that approach. There have been debates in this House on many occasions about how fundamental and human rights can be written into the Eurosurd uh, Treaty, non refoulement data protection, respect of uh, human dignity. There are many places in, this, in the passages in the text and the Parliament attaches great significance and importance to them, to those references. National coordination centres are to be uh, established in each of the member states. The, this is for collection of information by the authorities um, active in this area in the different member states w with regard to protecting the external frontiers. We hope this will lead to an improved cooperation within the countries themselves because that's what, because often the services in a, an individual country do not always uh, cooperate with each other. Uh, Frontex must have the necessary information and disseminate that to the member states. And they need to see whether the situation which is sketched out by um, Frontex, uh, whether there is any way of improving the situation Frontex can also play a role ensuring, in ensuring that certain uh, member states can or will not receive assistance. An, an innovation here is the use of uh, military information or military intelligence, which is not automatically available, but it's um, available on a need-to-know basis for successful um, operations. And we'll see in practice how this pans out. Now, I've mentioned the atta importance attached by this House to data protection and to uh, privacy. In emergency cases, data can be exchanged with other authorities. We attach great importance to the use of existing EU agencies. For example, the Satellite Centre. Um, and a whole host of other agencies besides, which already exist. And we've got to cooperate better with our neighbouring countries. We've had examples of this instance this afternoon. Let's uh, build on what uh, we can do so that uh, we're able to get um, a handle on the situation so that we can have interlocutors in other countries and have pathways for communication with other governments. The UK and Ireland must be able to uh, work hand in hand and cooperate. Therefore, uh, Madam President, I commend this report to the House. I think it's a good report. And I'd like to end with a word of thanks to my shadows, to the shadow rapporteurs and to their staff who have made a very valuable contribution to getting this agreement. Thank you very much. Commissioner Malmström, you have the floor. Honourable members, let me start by congratulating the rapporteur on his birthday today and also thanking him and the Libe Committee and the team around you uh, for the work you have done enabling us to finish the trilogues on the Eurosur regulation in less than six months. And I hope that the Parliament and the Council will adopt the, this regulation so that it can enter into force in December as provided. This is something that has been discussed since 2008 when the, commission, the then Commission presented its roadmap. Uh, and we have managed to develop, test, legislate and implement the system in a relatively short time. Uh, the debate on Eurosur comes very timely, of course, following directly after the debate on Lampedusa and also underlining the very important role that Eurosur has protecting and saving life of migrants trying to reach the European uh, shores. Now, of course, we have no illusions that Eurosur in itself will put an end to such horrific events. There are other root causes behind that, but it can help to make a difference. 
We are currently, from the Commission side, putting a lot of effort into improving the cap capability of Frontex and Member States to detect migrants travelling in small and unseaworthy boats. And as you know, travelling in these type of vessels is the main reason why so many people die at sea. And we have analysed and spoken with experts, Member States, industry, to better be able to detect the boats. And this confirms the approach chosen. The main challenges in detecting small boats is the lack of coordination between different national authorities and the lack of proper communication channels between them. Uh, and that is one of the key aims with Eurosur. Interagency cooperation. It will force member states internally to cooperate between their different, um, different authorities and uh, centres and in a better way coordinate and make sure that they are working together in the same room. And thanks to the European Parliament, the amendments to Eurosur regulation will require national coordination centres to ensure the timely and exact information sharing with search and rescue authorities and report any incidents relating to risk to the lives of migrants to Frontex. Also thanks to your amendments, the Eurosur regulation will require that Frontex cooperates not only with the European Action Service and EU uh, but also with EU delegations abroad in order to collect information on migration routes. Another very important characteristic of uh, Eurosur is information exchange. Frontex is right now testing with the Member States, the Eurosur communication network and the European situational picture. And this will allow Frontex to receive information from Member States on incidents occurring at external borders within minutes. So Eurosur will promote exchange of information not only inside and between Member States but also with neighbouring countries. And this takes place now outside the EU framework. But in the future this will be regulated strictly in the Eurosur regulation with very clear provisions of non-refoulement and personal data protection. And you have also insisted in the negotiations uh, that the Commission is given the competence to verify the compliance of any border surveillance agreement concluded between a member state and a third country and to make sure that these requirements uh, of the Eurosur regulation are accepted and that uh, we inform you accordingly. Last, solidarity is also an important word connected to Eurosur. It will help to identify hotspots at our external borders and to provide support to the relevant authorities much faster. This will be done by dividing the external land and sea borders into border sections and by attributing an impact level or a risk level to each border section. And depending on this level, Member States and Frontex will follow a step-by-step -step approach for providing support. And it will be up to the national coordination centres to coordinate and support available uh, support at national level. And if this is not enough, Member States can ask Frontex for more support. And this will allow a quickly deploy limited resources to the hotspots and also to redeploy them to other hotspots when the situation changes changes or improved. So thank you very much for the work that you have been doing, Mr. Mulder, and for the other people in the Libe uh, Committee. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. Grazie. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner. I now call on behalf of the Committee on Budget, uh, Mr. Riquet, for one minute. Merci, madame. Thank you very much, Madam. Today we have been very much affected by what has happened in Lampedusa and uh, we have heard from uh, many representatives of member states uh, about uh, the disaster that has happened. I am a rapporteur on the Euroshore budget uh, and I wanted uh, to talk to you about figures now and not about uh, human emotions. Uh, 16 million euros uh, from the Internal Security Fund and 19 million from the Frontex Agency will be allocated to Eurosur and the Frontex budget uh, will be unchanged in comparison to the previous MFF. Uh, 19 million of uh, the 89.9 million it has available to it. Uh, we need then uh, th this amount, but this is less than 100 million. Uh, so the member states have not handed competence uh, to the European Union uh, for safety at sea, nor a significant budget uh, to s monitor uh, external borders. Uh, in its migratory policy, Europe uh, is at the forefront, however, and uh, it is also a victim of media scrutiny. National politicians seem. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, blame uh, the European Commission and the Council for many of their troubles. 
Thank you very much. And now I will call speakers on behalf of the groups, on behalf of the European People's Party, Mr. Scuria, for two minutes. Mr. President. Yes, thank you very much indeed, President. First of all, I should like to thank the rapporteur, and I should like to congratulate him um, on his birthday, and also to thank him for the way in which he has acted in this regard. Now, we are talking as though Eurosur were already operational, and if it had have been that the Lampedusa tragedy could have been avoided, I'm not so sure that that could have been possible. I'm not sure it would have been so easy to have avoided this drama. Now, Eurosur, of course, makes uh, provision for the satellite monitoring of vessels as of their point of departure and to monitor them throughout their journey. But I think greater weight should be given to cooperation between border countries. This is an important aspect, Commissioner, because I think that we have to realize that uh, the um, captain of the Lampedusa ship was always somebody who had been picked up by the Italian authorities and was known to the Tunisian authorities. And I think that, again, he was an individual who was well known to the Tunisian authorities. So, again, I think that thanks to Eurosur, we will have a greater focus on the most sensitive areas of our borders. And in future, we will view them not as national borders, but as European borders. I'll leave it there for now, Commissioner. But essentially, we have seen many, many uh, people reach our shores to ask for asylum. So we shouldn't really be looking at the numbers. Rather, we should be looking at our capacity to take in these individuals. I have seen um, on occasion um, coastlines having to deal um, with uh, thousands of individuals. So don't let's forget the people of Lampedusa and don't let's alienate them from the institutions of Europe. Thank you very much. Now Mr. Zebra on behalf of the S&D. Thank you very much, uh, Madam. I'm speaking on behalf of my colleague Mr. Enchu. Well, of course, we're still uh, in the wake of the events of Lampedusa. We can see that the situation on our uh, external borders is absolutely unacceptable. We have to recognize that common borders mean common responsibility for those people who risk their lives to uh, reach our coasts. EURASA creates a framework for exchange of information and cooperation between the member states and Frontex. They. Uh, allow us to improve our activities at the uh, external borders. This should ha make a contribution to better combating crime and limiting illegal immigration. But the text does also ensure that the protection of uh, uh, refugees' lives are protected, especially at sea. This ensures that there's uh, safe access to Europe because it's only uh, by those means that they can go through a proper asylum procedure and their situation could be cleared up. Now, there is an explicit demand here that the system should respect the fundamental rights and doesn't uh, contribute to uh, refoulement. I think that that uh, really strengthens our position. And on a personal uh, note, I could say that the Bossifini law it completely contradicts our uh, principle of respect for human rights, and it should be clear to all of the institutions that this law should be abolished. Colleagues, a world without borders remains science fiction. In our real world, there are states and uh, unions of states, and uh, they have uh, many borders. To secure these borders and protect the lives of refugees is the objective of uh, this procedure. That's the uh, objective that we as Social Democrats have uh, uh, fought for, and that's the position that we arrived at through the negotiations. Let's hope that we get broad support for this uh, proposal. I cannot see colleague uh, Wikström, so I'm going to give the floor to colleague Keller on behalf of the Greens. 
Thank you very much. Well, right from the outset, we as Greens have campaigned for Eurosur to improve what it does to save refugees on the high seas. And we are extremely grateful to the rapporteur. But ultimately, what have we achieved? Well, of course, we have got saving lives as an objective, but it is not part of Eurosur because EU member states, and particularly Mediterranean states, have made sure that they don't have to save any more lives via Eurosur because they will have to work more closely with one another if they are to combat illegal immigration and cross-border crime. But they don't seem to want to come together voluntarily to save lives, rather just to fight crime and illegal immigration. The goal here, however, should be to save human lives. The only thing we've really achieved is that in future we shall know exactly how many refugees have um, put their lives in peril to reach Europe's shores. We don't want a European asylum deterrent system. We want a system that saves lives. And that's why we as Greens have tabled an amendment to try and emphasize this aspect of Eurosur. We don't want it just to be cosmetic. We want it to be part and parcel of the Eurosur system. We want it to be on an equal footing with the other objectives. We want to improve the way the system is used to save refugees' lives, and I would urge you all to support that amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I now call Mr. Tomasic. We have a coast line um, which we share with the Mediterranean area, and that is why I obviously support all of these measures. The European Union is a major donor to third countries, and it is a continent on which many people have found a better life, and we have tried to secure greater prosperity. But what we are now doing is operating a more stringent immigration policy. Of course, we have to monitor our external borders in order to monitor the influx of illegal immigrants. But I would emphasize that the perhaps some unintended consequences of these steps and many countries on the external borders which are not in the Schengen area and therefore all our efforts are undermined because for a variety of different reasons the necessary controls are not carried out on those borders. We have very long coastal borders as well as land borders with third countries and so those countries should be given additional assistance, logistical and financial support in order to meet the necessary criteria for admission to Schengen and also to deal with asylum seekers and improve the effectiveness of the whole asylum system. Yeah, vielen Dank. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I uh, would uh, also like to congratulate our rapporteur on his birthday. But if the question is, do we need more measures for fighting crime and uh, surveying the movements of migrants? That seems to be the main uh, objective if you look into Article 1 of Euros, sir. Now, we need to make the saving of human lives the central task, not simply to make a contribution to it. There's a message that we should be sending out quite clearly here, and we should try and uh, be absolutely clear about it. The idea isn't that uh, uh, my, my group should be got rid of quietly, and we can't do all of this by buying lots of security technology and building the camps. Now, this money is not required for euros, sir. It's required for saving the lives of the migrants. We need resettlement. We need a genuine development aid that deserves the name. And we want a proper sustainable development in the home countries, not just export of capital. So if you're in favor of refugees' lives, then you should vote against Eurosur. Mr. Batten, please.
Mr Batten, please, for the EFD. Previous debate, the Commissioner, Ms Malmström, if I heard her right, said that she wanted to open up more legal avenues for migration into Europe. Mrs Malmström, why don't you go to countries like Greece, Italy, Spain and France and Great Britain and ask the ordinary people there how they feel about that? My guess is that they would tell you, the vast majority will tell you, that they are immigrationed out and that they actually want less, not more, waves of people coming to their country. Maybe you should try stepping outside of the Brussels ideological bubble and, dare I use the term, show some solidarity with the ordinary working people of Europe. Now, you're talking here about border controls, but you actually have no intention whatsoever of actually trying to control immigration. Britain is swamped by continual waves of immigration from outside and inside the European Union, and the only way that we can control it is to leave the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. We'll now move on to other speakers in the debate, starting with Véronique Mathieu. Thank you very much, President, Madam Commissioner, colleagues. European citizens ask me what we're doing to increase security in Europe. And I reply, well, we've reformed Schengen, we've reformed Frontex, and we've now got Eurosur. And these three different instruments complement one another. The Eurosur network is designed so as we can exchange information on a real-time basis to know exactly what is happening at our borders. We've got cameras and satellites and other tools that we can use to better protect the public against illegal immigration and cross-border crime. The Frontex agency has also carried out a risk analysis of each border area. That is crucial. That way we have a clear picture of the situation on all of our borders and every time Frontex is notified of a risk, then Frontex can help that country increase border security. We share responsibility for managing Europe's external borders and we cannot countenance any weak links in the chain. So we need to take genuinely effective measures. In order to do so, we need to go even further. We talked about the tragedy of Lampedusa at some length earlier this evening. And we need to fight decisively against organized immigration networks and we need to work in concert with third countries. What is more, I support the European Commission's proposals to increase Frontex's budget. We need more joint operations coordinated by Frontex and we also need a European border guard in order to enhance the security of the European public. Thank you. Romero Lopez. Thank you very much. And now Mr. Romero Lopez. Uh, Thank you very much. And Mrs. Malstra, Mr. Mulder. I would have liked to have tabled an amendment to Article 1. It says in order to prevent, to combat, detect, prevent and combat illegal immigration, well, we should have added to combat uh, traders, uh, those that uh, um, trade uh, in human beings. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, rescue victims, illegal migrants that come across in vessels, uh, but we have uh, to, we cannot, how, how can we detect uh, when uh, there is illegal trade in human beings? Uh, we have to do that in order to prevent this sort of disaster. Then it says you're going to combat and prevent uh, serious uh, offenses, serious crimes. It's not only the Bossy and Finney rule. Uh, when we try and define uh, serious uh, crimes, uh, we can break them down into 32, and one of them is uh, uh, illegal assistance to irregular migrants. Uh, that is classified as a serious offense, a serious crime. That is contained in the definition of serious crime. We must remove it from there. We cannot really comply with that definition. It leads to confusion. We cannot include that in a document of this nature where we're trying to uh, draw up a situational map uh, uh, for drug traffic. Uh, etc. And uh, we have to safeguard and protect uh, these uh, irregular migrants. So let's remove that definition. It's dangerous. Thank you very much, Mr. Papalikunao. 
με τις ευχές μου. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by uh, uh, congratulating the rapporteur. Happy birthday. I hope that you will be uh, able to write a, a lot of uh, uh, future reports. Our rapporteur has done an excellent job. I'd like to thank him once again. Now, we've already said a lot about Lampedusa. We've all come to the conclusion that there are uh, gaps in coordination and gaps in the common approach to the problems that we face on the external borders. The Eurosur is supposed to fill in precisely these gaps. If we had this instrument, or if we had had it in place already, then I do think that in Lampedusa, Lampedusa not so many lives would have been lost. That's where we need to work. We need to try and get better results from coordination. We need to co combat illegal migration. We need to uh, be able to uh, stop the work of people smugglers. We need to try and ensure that we can coordinate properly together to ensure that everything could be properly administrated and, and precisely in times of crisis. Now, Commissioner, I do have a request. We've worked hard, and uh, we'd like to see this work pr transformed into practice very quickly. If you look at the uh, asylum agency, we set it up quickly, but very soon we realized that there were a lot of weaknesses, that the structure wasn't sufficient, and we had constantly new challenges to face. With Eurosur, I hope that we'll be able to make faster progress and that we can uh, build up the institution much better. Thank you very much. I now call Ms. Mitzi. Uh, President, Commissioner, we uh, know that these initiatives like Eurosur are very important. Countries like Malta and Italy have this uh, daily pro problem of immigration and we uh, and our, our uh, requests have uh, not had any results. Uh, besides Frontex, uh, we need uh, other help uh, in their own countries. Uh, the location for those that run away uh, uh, freedom of movement as well as dialogue with countries like Libya where these people are leaving. We need to control the departures. Ma Malta cannot be left alone to solve these problems. Uh, those that have come to Malta have come to Europe and Maltese problems are European problems. Uh, uh, where is uh, solidarity on the part of the European Union? To solve uh, uh, financial problems of every of every country uh, we have um, been very we have had a lot of solidarity but in this case uh, this is the door to europe with thousands of people uh, coming towards europe but there is no solidarity let us show this with uh, facts what solidarity means otherwise we are making fun of each other or we're making fun of our citizens and uh, even those people who are coming to us for help Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Diaz de Mera. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, welcome and congratulate Eurosur and the rapporteur. We will fully back uh, Eurosur as we have done uh, Frontex and Schengen. However, I would not be able to support the report because Article 17A uh, is. Uh, something which violates uh, our assets under Schengen. In 19, uh, it uh, includes uh, an error in law. It mentions uh, what uh, articles of law those that want to apply it would have to comply with that. I think that the Council has uh, to receive uh, uh, information and notification from the member states and then transmit this to the Commission. I think that this uh, procedure has not been fully complied with in this case. Uh, a member state uh, that is not a part of Schengen cannot be placed on a par with a third country. Those that are part of uh, this common uh, space uh, have certain responsibilities and certain obligations in terms of uh, in economic and political terms and in terms of solidarity. Uh, 
and these are not the same uh, obligations as uh, those of the member states that are not a part of Schengen. We cannot create uh, an a la carte Schengen uh, system uh, as uh, seems to be uh, the goal here. We would be dismantling one of the major achievements of community policy, namely the Schengen area. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Mr. Pirker. Madam President, Commissioner, I think there's one thing we should be clear about, and that is that the Lampedusa tragedy was caused by traffickers. They lured people to their deaths with false promises. The question now is what can we do to fight against these organized criminal gangs. We have to tackle the root causes of illegal migration more effectively. We also need to be clear about the fact that Europe does have certain instruments available to it, and we should try and ensure that we coordinate those instruments optimally in order to fight against traffickers. We've got Frontex, we've got Europol, and we in particular have this new border surveillance system, Eurosaw, and I think that that increases our chances in the fight against human traffickers. I think there will in future be new forms of cooperation with third countries which are urgently needed as you yourself alluded to, Madam. And last but not least, we will be able to save many human lives. I would like to say, if I may, however, that I think that all of these measures will not suffice. We need to invest far more in development aid to stabilize those countries that are not intact, which are failed states, which are not in a position to cater to the needs of their people. I mean, that is the real root cause of migration. We also need to carry out wide-ranging information campaigns in countries of origin to make people aware of the kinds of risks they run if they put themselves into the hands of traffickers and also make sure that they can inform um, themselves about legal migration channels into the European Union. We don't want to see a repeat of this tragedy. Thank you very much. Much indeed, uh, Ms. McAvoy. Thank you. I uh, completely agree with colleague Birker. In the past 25 years, almost 20,000 illegal migrants drowned in the Mediterranean Sea. Until now, 231 dead bodies were recovered from uh, around uh, Lampedusa. This uh, latest tragedy shows that regrets do nothing to stop loss of life. Illegal migration does not only lead to loss of life, but it uh, encourages other illegal activities such as smuggling and so on. Eurosu, which is a European uh, f uh, border surveillance system, has as its aim to strengthen uh, the EU's external borders and to prevent crime. The Union should increase its capacity to react by introducing a centralized cooperation system between the member states. We should also provide the technical and operational uh, framework, a common uh, framework for the surveillance instruments, as well as very clear-cut uh, responsibilities for each and every member state, uh, because this is the only way in which we can both protect the lives of the migrants and uh, provide a European space that is secure. And finally, let us not forget that extraditing people to countries that execute uh, uh, convicts or torture uh, is forbidden by the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Iacolino. Thank you very much, Madam President. I can imagine um, the people are very tired after a very long day, so I should like to thank the Commissioner for all her hard work. I have to admit that we have seen great solidarity from other member states, and that is exactly what we need. We need their energy and their resources because we have been trying to fight against trafficking in human beings. And 
I would also like um, to wish our rapporteur many happy returns. Um, also congratulate him um, on the report on this agency. Now, Eurosur clearly will serve to strengthen coordination because it's going to be the operational arm of Frontex because we urgently need Frontex to up its game. There has to be structured dialogue with individual national authorities that also have to be economic resources forthcoming because the situation is deteriorating. Now, yesterday, the Council of Ministers decided that they would allocate an extra one billion to Syria in the light of the current situation. But we are likely to see inflows into other countries in southern Europe, countries on Europe's borders. And we have to deal, of course, as well with North African countries. But we have to respect the rights of migrators, refugees, as well as the populations which are concerned by these inflows. Thank you very much, Mr. Yakulino. Now, Mr. Luhan. Thank you, President. First of all, I can congratulate the rapporteur, and I would like to wish him uh, many happy returns of the day. I appreciate very much the Eurosur system, and of course, I appreciate. Uh, the Commission's efforts, we talk a lot about effects. We talk a lot about what has happened uh, tragically. But we fail to s discuss the, the causes as much as the effects. At this moment, I think we are dealing with systems that are failing, uh, border supervision uh, systems, that is, especially for uh, maritime borders. We have a uh, lack of cooperation in security matters between uh, EU member states or between the Union and Afri North African countries. And sometimes we may even talk about lack of funds and lack of equipment, of essential equipment. Let me give you an example. Recently, I uh, went on a mission somewhere in the Gulf of Aden. In order to, and, and I, uh, I uh, learned that they are trying to fight piracy on a surface of about 2,000 square kilometers, but they have no supervision systems. Uh, naval police cannot reach uh, a certain spot uh, very quickly in order to catch the perpetrators. Uh, and that was just an example. So I believe we need much better cooperation in order to fight piracy, and we need much better cooperation between the member states and the North African states. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to ask you all to stick on your time slot because uh, uh, we don't have much time in our disposal. So we proceed with the catch the eye. We have uh, five minutes for the procedure, so we'll give the floor to five colleagues, starting from colleague Metzola. Uh, President, as I said today in the uh, previous discussion, uh, where we talk about irregular uh, immigration, we need to consider this situation in a holistic way. We need to see the full picture, and don't, not only a part of it. Uh, a, a, an important part for any solution is to focus to uh, fight against uh, organized crime. Organized crime where the victims are the most vulnerable. Uh, the, uh, this surveillance system with an investment of about uh, 250,000 uh, uh, euros, we are going to um, have a stronger control and surveillance of the frontiers. Uh, beside this uh, cooperation uh, to fight against these uh, crimes, we are also giving a good contribution to give uh, protection and save the lives of those people that are trying to come into Europe. This, in this way, we are uh, reducing deaths in the region. This is a system that the authorities need. And I uh, close uh, to, and I say that this is going to come into, uh, uh, into force uh, in December in places like Malta, and that way we can save lives. Thank you. Next speaker will be Mr. Zemke. I would like to thank you very much, and I would like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that every day on the borders of the European Union we see dramatic events. But every day shows also that we continue having very serious problems ensuring impermeability of these borders. 
uh, this report and this regulation is intended to uh, improve this situation, but I would like to draw your attention to the philosophy behind this document. In this document, we are mm, putting a strong stress on better cooperation uh, amongst European Union member states, and this is very very correct and necessary, but I believe that we should attach more, more importance to the cooperation between the European Union and the external uh, neighbors, because uh, if we do not see progress here, I think it will be very difficult to talk about success in combating organized crime, uh, human beings trafficking, and uh, also about uh, the protection of immigrants. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kromberg. Thank you, Chair. I would like to un underline that detec detecting boats is important, but it does not rescue people. The question is the lack of rules and who is responsible and what to do. And I don't think politicians should hide behind technological solutions instead of developing common refugee policy. A further aspect is that this is supposed to be applied on all external borders. The external borders are very, very different. The 1,300 kilometers Finnish border will not need saving lives. I don't think we should establish this system on all borders. Our wolves and bears, they can manage themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kirkhope. Uh, President, Commissioner, this proposal is very important for Europe, for the security of its borders, and for the prevention of unnecessary and tragic loss of life at sea. The UK has massive experience and expertise in naval activity and in intelligence uh, sharing. It is therefore rather disappointing to me that to my Spanish friends and the EPP are attempting to exclude the UK from this measure in order to make a territorial point. I hope this House and those friends themselves realise that the UK's valuable contribution and involvement in the future of Eurosaur is more important than any temporary disagreements that we may have between our two states. Thank you very much. The next speaker will be Mr. Petrovic. Thank you very much indeed. I sincerely hope that this new border system will help us prevent the kinds of tragedies that we've seen in Lampedusa. Now, there are multiple reasons for the tragedy, but this system will make it possible to save human lives because we will be monitoring vessels and we will also be clamping down on illegal flows of migrants. So, for all of these reasons, the member states should... Croatia has a national coordination center and it will become operational in December of this year and we will be carrying out surveillance over our territory and this will allow us to institute a system which will allow us to identify uh, vessels on the high seas. I very much hope that funds will be forthcoming to allow us to set up this system because Croatia is doing everything it can to meet the criteria for Schengen and is stepping up its border controls. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. Commissioner. According to the proposed Thank you very much, Commissioner. President. Now, according to the proposed regulation, Eurosaur is supposed to work in strengthening cooperation in the uh, different member state authorities. It's supposed to help to improve the exchange of information, and it's supposed to improve the exchange of information through Frontex as well. So the new Eurosaur system should help the member states to uh, have access to the Frontex t tools through information exchange and it should uh, increase their reaction capacity to uh, respond to illegal immigration. So therefore I feel that we need to use this system to ensure that there is a better coordination with uh, systems in third countries as well. As for the leadership of the system, the uh, uh, 
proposed financing mechanism does appear to be a little bit too complicated. It's not clear from the proposal exactly how the financing measures are going to work and what the resources will be available at the end of the day. It seems that a number of the practical uh, aspects need to be ironed out. Thank you very much. Commissioner Malmström, please. You have the floor. Thank you very much. As you know, this has been discussed since 2008, and Member States and Frontex have already established the main component of the Eurosur on a pilot basis. For instance, 18 of the 19 Member States applying Eurosur as of 2nd of September this year have already established their National Coordination Centre, and I'm confident that Croatia uh, will also establish its coordination centre in the coming weeks. As you know, Frontex has also connected these national coordination centres to the Eurosur communication network on a pilot basis. And this means that Eurosur can become operational in December 2013, as planned, once the regulation has been formally adopted by the European Parliament and the Council. There was a question uh, by the Honourable uh, Gentleman on the costs. In its impact assessment, uh, accompanying the Eurosur legislative uh, proposal, the Commission estimated the costs for Eurosur to amount to 244 uh, million euros for the years 2014 to 2020. We now estimate that the actual cost will be a little bit lower because the budget provided to Frontex for Eurosur under the next multi financial framework is lower than estimated in the impact assessment. However, it is currently, of course, not possible to provide a fully accurate cost of the Eurosur because the allocation to be provided under the European Earth Observation Programme, Copernicus, uh, has not been determined yet. Uh, it will, of course, take some time until Eurosur will work smoothly and Frontex will also need the first year especially appropriate funding to be able to fully implement the Eurosur as required by the regulation. I am really glad for the cooperation we have had with the European Parliament. Your amendments have significantly improved the text. You have provided the integrated border system with a very strong emphasis on saving lives and giving it a human touch. Uh, and I would like to thank you for this. I think your report can be a very important tool when it comes to interagency cooperation, near real-time information exchange and solidarity. So thank you for the work you have been doing here. Uh, and thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much, Commissioner Malmström. And now it's uh, uh, up to our rapporteur. Mr. Malder, uh, I understand that it's your birthday, so I wish you happy birthday. And you can wish me happy birthday because I had my birthday yesterday. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> my, congr my congratulations as well. Uh, my birthday was not today, but last week. Uh, but thanks anyway for the congratulations. Uh, First, I want to thank uh, everybody for the contribution to this debate and for the kind words that were sometimes uh, spoken. As I said uh, earlier, I can recommend the agreement to this House that implies automatically that I reject all the amendments, even the amendments of the Greens. I do not think that it will improve the text. The saving of human lives is, is very elaborately treated in the text, so an extra amendment does not make it better. And on top of that, if it would be accepted, it would jeopardize the whole agreement that we have at the moment. And I think that's not worth it. I think we have to start with this Eurosur as quickly as possible. So I would strongly advise this House not to vote for the amendments of the Greens, despite the very valuable contribution they gave to the uh, this regulation uh, for the establishment and for the active participation. Thank you all very much and uh, I hope we will have after tomorrow a Eurosur regulation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, colleague uh, Mulder. The discussion is concluded and uh, we will vote uh, tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock. Το επόμενο θέμα στην ημερήσια διάταξη είναι δήλωση της Επιτροπής. Now the next item on the agenda is a, a commission statement on the suspension of the SWIFT agreement as a result of the NSA surveillance. Malmström. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to inform you about the actions I have decided to take following the press allegations about the possible access of the U.S. National Security Agency, NSA, to the data exchange through the EU-US TFTP agreement. On the 24th of September, I met 
many of you in the libe committee and inform you about the ongoing efforts to follow up on this matter which is of course of great concern the discussions in libe were helpful and confirmed the need to clarify a number of issues since the first allegations appeared in the press as i told you then uh, i have immediately taken action in july i sent a first letter to my u.s counterparts and in September the 11th, I called Under Secretary uh, for the Treasury Department, Mr. Cohen, and I told him that I was waiting for substantial information on the alleged tapping. The next day, I also sent him a letter in which I requested opening of consultations under Article 19 of the TFTP agreement. As you know, this is the procedure that is uh, regulated in the agreement in case there are questions or, or uh, uh, things that need to be clarified. In reply to my letter, and I share the letter uh, with the Libre Committee, on the 23rd of September, uh, the US authority provided some explanations, but several important questions remained unanswered. I therefore, this Monday, met with Under Secretary Cohen in Brussels, and I appreciate that he came despite the budgetary constraints. We had an open and very long discussion, and he clarified a number of points. During that meeting, under Secretary Cohen explicitly confirmed that since the entry into force of the TFTP agreement, the US government has not collected financial messaging from SWIFT in the EU. He also said that the US government has not served any subpoenas on SWIFT in the EU during that period. I insisted to have that very important confirmation statement confirmed in writing. We also discussed in some detail the established channels through which the US do obtain financial information in SWIFT format used by financial institutions worldwide. Also, on this I ask for further explanations in writing in order to be absolutely sure that these mechanisms do not conflict with the TFTP agreement. At this stage, therefore, our contacts with SWIFT and the US government have not revealed any evidence that the TFTP agreement have been violated.